Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Twin Motion 2022 preview video. Now today we're going to look at a really exciting new feature. It's going to be the HDRI Sky Domes. Now these are now built into Twin Motion from the ground up and there's a really big range to choose from and they're a really nice easy way to dramatically improve the quality of your renders and get some gorgeous lighting effects. So we're going to take a look at these in this video. Hope you enjoy the video and please subscribe if you're new around here. Thanks for watching. Now today we're going to be looking at a really nice new feature uh, called Sky Domes and we're going to be looking at how to implement this and do some renders on your models. So this is a project I did for a client a while ago and I've just been playing around with it in the new environments and I'm really impressed by the Sky Domes. So I've got a few images here as you can see. So let's just review the normal image. Okay, so this is a normal image before we put a Sky Dome in. Here is the image with the Sky Dome and you can see immediately see the difference if I click between the two. The difference is mainly if you look at the reflections and things like the water and the glass, those are the areas where you're going to see the most difference and things like the lighting as well and the detail in the environment. Um, so I'll talk about the Sky Domes independently but we'll also talk a little bit about the Path Tracer combined with the Sky Domes as well. So all we need to do to introduce the Sky Dome is click onto the More tab, go to Lighting and you can see now I've got the Sky Dome on. So very quickly you can see the difference between having it on and off. Big difference. Now you have all the usual sort of settings available, the ambient lighting, uh, things like exposure levels as well. So all of those usual settings are available. But let's just keep those for now where we were and go to more. Now if we click onto more you can see we've got the intensity of the sky dome. So this is very nice. This slider just introduces uh, more brightness into the sky dome itself. Now if you go too dark obviously you don't get any light from the sky dome. But look at the difference in the water as we introduce the reflectivity get a bit more sky being reflected in that water. Another really nice setting is this one, the match sun setting. So basically if we go and rotate the sky dome around you can see that the bright spot in the sky dome is actually doing the lighting in the image and that's really nice when you look at the things like the shadows coming across from those trees onto the building. Um, so that's an extremely nice aspect that you can match the lighting from the sky dome but if we turn that one off then we're just back into the normal lighting. So that would mean you'd have to go back through and go to location, and then you can adjust your time of day. So you still have the sky dome available, but this is just going back to traditional lighting, which might be something you want to do for a particular image. Okay, so we just go back into the lighting settings. We've got the sky dome settings available in here, but I just want to talk about these settings for a moment, because these have a big impact on the image as well, as you see it. Um, so we've got the overall exposure level. So this is the overall brightness and darkness of the image, uh, of the entire image itself. So for now, let's just keep that at zero. Then, of course, we do have the white balance here, and this kind of makes the image a bit warmer or a lot cooler. Um, so you really want to be aiming for something around sort of 7,000 Kelvin. It's quite a nice angle. Uh, maybe 8,000 for a slightly sort of warmer image like this one. Now we've got the sun intensity, so you can see if I go right up, the sun intensity gets very bright, makes a big difference, but colours get a bit washed out, particularly uh, on this sort of landscaped area here. So it's going to just slide that up a little bit to about 10. Now the mean intensity will only really apply when we're doing nighttime images, um, so that won't make any difference on this particular image at the moment. Then we've got the overall ambient lighting in the image. Again, a little bit like exposure in some ways, but this is sort of more the bounce light. It's not the overall image, it's the light in the sort of shadowed areas. So if you want to bring out the detail in those shadowy areas, just slide that up a bit. Um, but don't go too far else, it looks really blown out. Okay, so those are some general tips on the lighting itself. So let's just review, let's go back to our images. And here we go, let's just review, there we are, there's our first image. There's our new image with the sky dome with a few adaptions. And finally, here is our image with the path tracing turned on. Um, so the new path tracing combined with the sky domes, it gives absolutely glorious renders, really beautiful. So you can see we're progressing at the moment. I think I'm probably just in low or medium settings. 
Just let that denoiser finished and wow, look at that realistic image that we've got there. So I think you can really see the difference between where I started, uh, get ready, there's where I started and that final image there. Let's have a look at a couple more images and examples here. So again, here is a normal image here. Here is one with the sky dome. Okay, and you can immediately see the difference in the sky dome. On this one, I've just upped the uh, exposure or down the exposure a little bit. So it's just taken that back up to zero. And you can see I was able to just make that a little bit warmer or cooler as required. Look at that sun intensity. If you get that up quite bright, it goes really intense. But if you do that, you can then drop down the ambient lighting a little bit just to tune that image up. But the most important difference is the sky dome. You know, of course, look at the difference between the sky dome off where we started and the sky dome on. Um, I think I've got a few other effects in here like depth of field as well. Just really sort of playing around with this. You can see it's so instant twin motion. As a real time rendering software, it's just unbeatable in terms of the uh, speed and just love the way you can just revolve around this sort of image uh, of the sky dome, just to get that beautiful lighting falling on the building of the trees there into the model. Now, you will notice again, if I just enable the path tracer, suddenly the image renders in the path tracing with just so much more detail. Um, and this is on low samples. So by the time you actually crank up the sample number, maybe re render a 4K image, um, it will take longer, of course, but you're going to get an absolutely beautiful rendering. So just wait for a second while it finishes. Uh, there we go. The denoiser kicks in. And that's the kind of quality that I'm getting out of Twin Motion now all day long with the new Path Tracer and the new Sky Domes. Really, really nice image. Okay, so let's take a look at how you actually apply the Sky Domes and use them. So what you're going to want to do, if you've got an image set up, is click More, go into the Settings, and then go to Lighting. Now you can see at the moment we've got the sky dome off. So all you need to do to apply the sky dome is go back to your libraries, go to sky domes here, and you're going to notice that Epic have introduced uh, three folders with lots of different types of libraries. We've got the morning and afternoon sun here, kind of like more of a daytime sort of noon sun here, and then um, below sun, sort of sunset time. I'm going to go into this one, the sunset time. Within each category, you will also notice there's, you know, clear skies um, and also cloudy and overcast as well. So just to make this really atmospheric, I'm going to go for like an overcast sky. Um, what you need to do is scroll down and basically download the ones you're interested in. So all you need to do to download them is click on this little icon here. Let's go for this one here. You'll notice a little progress bar just spinning up for a second while it downloads. Some of these are actually quite large files. Um, they're basically HDRI files, so some of them can be quite large. That one's nearly downloaded now. Um, but, you know, they're very high quality, and the fact you get so many is absolutely a brilliant bonus, I would suggest. So that's nearly downloaded. All we need now though, to do is drag it into the image and let that object create. You can see it process it for a second. And then within a second or two, we should see the new HDRI lighting kicking in. Let's just give it a second to load. And there we go. And just boom, there we go. Okay, so once the sky dome is on, as we said before, you can tweak the settings so you can see whether it's adjusting the lighting or not. Makes a big difference as you can see on the water. Uh, we can adjust that intensity to kind of get the brightness up a bit as well. And I really love the way you can just sort of slide around the settings to get a very different effect depending on the kind of bright spot in the sky. As you go around, you sort of see that sort of sunset -y side coming in. Absolutely glorious. Really lovely, lovely images. So it gives you a really nice ability to choose the view that you would like. Now, once you've done that, then we can just rewind, go back to our image. You can see now that image has the sky dome applied. So if we do want to, we can just go into the lighting itself and just do a bit of final kind of tweaking on the image itself, just to kind of get that looking exactly how we like it. All in real time, of course. Um, and don't forget, you've got these wonderful settings here, the white balance settings. So sometimes that can look a bit overbalanced if you go uh, up a bit too high. So let's just take that down a bit. A slightly cooler image here. Let's boost up the sun intensity. Lovely. 
Now, one of the other really nice things with the Skydome is the fact that you can see it works really well with these uh, reflection probes as well. So I've just dropped a couple of those into the image and it's pretty subtle, but if you look carefully in the glass, you can see some nice reflections coming in. So we'll leave those uh, in the model. The other thing I wanted to show you was that the weather affects very nicely as well. So here's the season. You can see we've got the nice sort of green season going to autumn. Uh, even going through to the winter and of course we can introduce the things like the rain as well so there we go just introduce a little bit of rain maybe a little bit of snow just sort of falling down in our image lovely how these sort of effects can make a very attractive image with the snow and what I'm interested to do actually just see how this will work with the snow with the path tracer. So let's introduce some path tracing and snow and see how this actually looks. Um, I really do love the path tracer. It's very, uh, very sort of relaxing almost to watch um, as it sort of unfolds and the image gets nicer and refines. And when it gets to the very, very final stage, uh, the denoiser kicks in then at that stage. And then you can truly see all the graininess disappears and you just get an absolutely stunning image. And I really love that. So yeah, I'm gonna go with that. That's really, really nice. So now you can see we've got the normal image. This is where we started. Looks nice uh, until you then see the one with the sky dome. It looks even nicer in the autumn. And now we've got our winter version with the path tracing as well. Um, one thing I would like to see maybe is the path tracing stays remembered and it doesn't recalculate every single time, perhaps unless you've moved something. That might be a feature you could sort of have it so it remembered uh, the path tracing that it was last on and you just click refresh if needed to. That would be a really nice feature that perhaps I'd like to see added in the future. But apart from that, it's a very, very nice implementation. I um, love the reflections of the water. Remember this is ice because it's in the winter. So I'm going to render those uh, three views out. So all we need to do to render those out as ever is just click onto the export tab. It's my images here and if I'm right, it's going to be Let's see if we can find them. This one, the normal one, the autumn one, and the one with the snow. So we'll go ahead and render those out and we'll come back and review those in a second. So just to click render, start render, and select a folder. So I'm rendering those out at 4K. We'll select the folder and leave them to render. Um, now, the path trace renders will, of course, take a bit longer to render. That's what you would expect with this level of quality. Um, but the other images are really, really quick. So Twinmotion 2022 offers the perfect balance between speed and then the quality is there when you would like to use it. Okay, so just before we finish off the video, I just want to make the point that the sky domes are not just for use externally. They work really well for internal visuals as well. Um, so here's a nice little sort of view of our property uh, looking out into the beautiful view there. You can see it looks great already. Let's just go back to that initial view. And here it is with the sky dome. Um, as I've said before, with the Sky Dome, it's just so easy to adjust that lighting. Um, so here I can just sort of rotate the Sky Dome around. You can see the sun actually going through and doing that sort of sunset as it goes. It makes a huge difference. Depending on where the sun is, you can see the lighting interacting with the building there. So it looks lovely. Again, we can always turn that sun off and we can just sort of revolve the sky. It doesn't quite have the same effect, does it? So definitely something I think you're going to leave on most of the time, the match sun setting. Um, let's just have it sort of setting over there. And again, we can sort of brighten the intensity of that sky dome to get that lighting in the image. Now, if you do also want to, of course, you can then combine that with the path tracing. So let's click on the path tracer, have a quick look at the image while it renders out. Um, so you notice with the path tracer, some of the settings will need adjusting. Um, things like the ambient backgrounds, uh, the ambient lighting, and basically maybe the exposure as well. Those kind of things look a little bit different in the path trace view from the normal view. So I definitely recommend you play around with the settings until you get what you're looking for. But they look absolutely fantastic. 
So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed making this one. It's been super fun to make. I'm so impressed by the new path tracing and sky domes in combination. And really just to make the point that you can still animate as well as do stills. Now the animations do take longer, but they look awesome. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.